Imagine traveling at speeds unthinkable in a car as they zip past suburbs and through the pristine countryside of southern Wisconsin. Soon, a bustling city looms on the horizon and you're amazed that you ever used to attempt to take this route in your own vehicle. From Madison to Milwaukee, there is no denying it. The size of suburbs are expanding. There are more people, more cars, and more of a demand for a mass public transportation system. I ask you, how can we bring change to our region so that it may strive for years to come? The answer lies in high-speed commuter rail systems. Not only are the rails cost-effective economic boosters, but they also don't rely on foreign oil. Today, I'd like to persuade you that Wisconsin should have a high-speed commuter rail system along the 18151 highway. Let's start with how these rails can help the economy. The U.S. is spending too much money on wars over in the Middle East. America has become so dependent on oil for transportation that we're sending our soldiers overseas to fight, literally, for the sake of our precious oil. From the debate.org, we learned that in 2001, before 9-11, Bush's cabinet said, Iraq remains a destabilizing influence to the flow of oil into international markets from the Middle East. And because of this unacceptable risk to the U.S., military intervention is necessary. Costofwar.com shows the spinning numbers of the money we are spending. As of today, April 21, 2013, the cost of the war in Iraq is over $800 billion, and it is constantly rising. Moreover, the money we are spending on the foreign oil is a loss for us. It would be so much better if we could keep the money spent in America and boost our own economy. This can be done by incorporating more rail systems in the U.S., which do not rely on oil to run. If America did this, we might not have to continue fighting over keeping our foreign oil in good hands. We'd be able to save money and invest in rail systems. America would also be keeping our profit in our country and improving our economy, by buying from U.S. citizens. Arlen Wasserman says that if we had a commuter rail, our area would experience business growth. Trainweb.org discusses how 6,000 jobs can be created from a $100 million rail transit investment, as well as a $300 million in income, a huge benefit to our local economy. High-speed commuter rail systems are the way to go. Now that you know something about our economy's potential with the use of commuter rails, we'll factor in how they outweigh highways. Highways have a negative monetary impact, something that somehow needs to be fixed. Highways depreciate the value of homes nearby, according to trainweb.org. They cause traffic congestion, and in one year, the estimated cost for drivers in America was $40 billion worth of time and delay. High-speed commuter rail systems are the way to go. A Dane County commuter rail referendum organizer from 2010, Mike Thompson, the comment out of an article by Steven Verberg believed the commuter rail op option wasn't affordable and didn't serve a purpose. Now, I agree that the amount of money that will take to go into jumpstarting this project will not be a small amount. However, looking at both options, Arlen Wesserman notes that Whereas a new rail line may cost $1.2 million each mile, a two-lane highway can cost $7 million per mile, and a four-lane highway can cost upwards of $11.7 million per mile. High-speed rails are the way to go. You now know about commuter rails and how they're a step ahead of highways, but are they helpful for individuals? Individuals are spending so much more for their car transportation and the numbers for gas prices dot, dot, Wisconsin, dot, gov states are projected to rise. Consider the fact that to own your own car, one would have to pay for gas, upkeep, insurance, and the car itself. If we switch to a high-speed commuter rail, we'd save money in the long run. Looking at the 2013 federal mileage reimbursement rate from the IRS.gov, it is 56 and a half cents per mile to operate a vehicle. Now to ride a commuter rail, trainweb.org states, it is just 29 cents per mile. So let's put this into perspective. 
If we went from our hometown of Barneville to Madison three times per, per month for one year, the highway route would be $1,280. But if we went by rail, it would just be $660. So, if you're an average person who has to work in Madison, going from Barneveld, so five times per week for a whole year, the highway route would be $8,500 per year, while the rail would just be $4,500. And I don't know about you guys, but with the economy as it is now, I could sure use that extra $4,000 somewhere else in my life. As you can see, high-speed commuter rail systems are the way to go. The need for the high-speed commuter rail systems is now. They are our future. High-speed commuter rails are huge money savers and economy boosters. They're more safe and cheaper to build than highways. Their inclusion into our daily transportation routines will literally make a world of difference. Going from Madison to Milwaukee and anywhere in between, it'll totally change the way we think about transportation. We can and must act as the progressive state that we are and help lead our country toward high-speed commuter rail usage. And we can begin by having a high-speed commuter rail system along the 18151 highway.